What's going on, gents? Welcome back to Building a God Squad here at NHL 24. We got a lot of great stuff to cover today, starting with the Martin Natchez free MSP card that you get by completing Hut Moments. I got some tips and tricks to share with you guys. Before we jump into that, I do want to give you guys a little bit of a team update because there's some major new additions. So let's jump into it. Obviously, we added the Martin Natchez MSP card. I have not even used this card. Full disclosure, I have not used this card in online yet. I literally grinded out the Hut Moments and didn't have any energy left in my brain to try to go play online but look at this card this thing looks phenomenal i'm going to start using all the abilities active get a feel for how the card is stay tuned for the next episode in this series i'll share my thoughts i can't imagine this card is anything but spectacular also guys i am planning on pumping out this series as well as other content a little bit more frequently over the next few weeks january is typically the most fun time of year because of team of the year because of Christmas and holiday, people getting the game and playing for the first time of the year. It's usually the most popular that this game is. January is always the month that has the most players in it. And typically, in terms of content, from what I've heard, this is my first January making content, I believe. I'm not sure about that. Maybe I did a little bit last year, but that would have been like my very first videos. Uh, this is my first like full-time making content. And I'm excited to, to see how, how people like all the stuff um whether you're new players or whether you've been playing all year and you're excited for team of the year second line looks the same third line we added in joe sakic this card has been a little disappointing i started in my top six and he just didn't quite cut it out for whatever reason i didn't play well with him but he does have 99 face off so he gonna, he's gonna stick around on the squad obviously i'm just realizing that this tevu teravina card is all the way up to an 89 overall now he is getting up there i'm glad i made this card because it should get to 99 and he's going to have a spot on my team probably all year. And here's how the fourth line is looking. Again, I got a Nations of Hockey card in there just to help work with the objectives. On defense, we got a coin regear. We had the newly acquired Seth Jones. In my opinion, this is the best Christmas card. Obviously, it depends on what your team kind of needs because there's some other options that are definitely decent. But I felt like Seth Jones pairing with Bobby Orr is just going to be a solid compliment to round out the top four here. And then I have base Kale McCarr and Nick Lidstrom still. I'm planning on adding a right-hand defenseman to really shore up the defense come team of the year time. I'm hoping for, I, I, I'm guessing that we're going to get either an Eric Carlson card and or even a Kale McCarr card. So one of those guys, if not both, are going to be joining the squad if I can make it work financially in terms of in-game financially. Um, <laughs> and then last but not least, we had a huge poll, literally six foot six Jacob Markstrom card, 86 overall, Live Moments card. We're gonna try him out. He should be okay, but he has a goalie, so he's probably gonna just be terrible like every other goalie in this game. I've had some ups and downs with Markstrom cards this year, so we'll, uh, we'll give, him a, give him a try. He does have a couple of good synergies with speed boost and acceleration boost which are really good synergies that are still pretty hard to activate. My guess is this card might actually go up in value over the next few weeks because as people are adding those team of the year cards, and obviously those come with a lot of synergy slots, maybe people really start focusing on getting these types of synergies active. And then if you can get a six foot six goalie that has one of each, that could be a good buy. He's also got some pretty good abilities here as well. So I'm gonna try him out. Last but not least, Got to have the Nations of Hockey backup goalie to work on those objectives. It's just free power-up collectibles, guys. I don't know why anyone would not do that. Get your free power-up collectibles. Make sure you got, you know, at least one or two guys on your squad from the Nations of Hockey events. And then obviously they have a chance to upgrade as well. All right, gents, next up, we're going to get into some tips and tricks for the Natchez MSP Hut moments. So as you can see, I have all of the moments done going to be honest with you guys this one was pretty challenging a lot harder than that Giroux card earlier in the year this took me about two hours of total gameplay time to finish I did the first two hut moments the day that this card came out struggled with it a little bit but it wasn't too bad I tried the superstar hut moment one time didn't do very well and I called it a day there's no need to stress over and grind out and sweat on these hot moments it's just not worth it guys if you're really struggling take a breather come back to it the next day i would recommend spending maybe an hour a day working on these the card's still going to be there if you're not 
super good at this game, it is going to be hard to do all these objectives. It really is. So I would put maybe an hour a day if you're really, really struggling, or hopefully these tips and tricks can help you out and you can get it done. So first up, the gameplay in HUT moments is different than any other gameplay in HUT, which is kind of weird. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. They make it very arcadey, which is unfortunate because you can't just play the game and you can't just play hockey and get these objectives done. You kind of have to cheese it up and you got to utilize some of these tips and tricks to, uh, you know, just manipulate the game. And to me, that's not very fun. It, it is really unfortunate. Once you get the puck in the offensive zone, the AI will just absolutely obliterate you if you get within five feet. They also have like these super automatic poke checks that hit the puck off your stick every time. So you really got to cheese it up and use these glitch goals and use these just dumb strategies. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, hopefully going forward, maybe they can change it to make it more like squad battles. Like if, if this setting was just in a squad battles, squad battles type feel, it would be it would be awesome. And I personally wouldn't mind. Like I would way rather have the objectives be even harder to do, but put into a squad battles type feel instead of this arcadey game that we have in hut moments because right now it's it's hard and annoying and it's not hard because the objectives themselves are super hard to do it's hard because the gameplay is just so annoying because you can't just play hockey you gotta really cheese it up like i said so hopefully going forward they might uh you know they think about maybe changing that and going to you know, making hut moments feel the same as squad battles and rivals and champs and everything else in hut. Don't know why it's different. So with that being said, we're going to start with some very general tips. If you are struggling, I would recommend just focus on one objective at a time. It sounds so simple, but it's going to be hard to do all three objectives in each of these hut moments in one game. It's just probably not going to be possible. And really, it's probably going to be even more time effective if you just focus on that one objective at a time, because you'll actually get some objectives done as you go. And you'll probably even get some games where you are getting a couple done in at one time. I would focus on one objective. Maybe you get it done the first half of the game, then move on and try to focus on the second objective. I know a couple times I was doing that and I just happened to get two done in the same game because I was just focusing on the one. Also keep in mind guys that the strategy settings is going to default to something weird. It defaults to overload. So if you're not familiar with overload if you're used to behind the net which is what most people run on with like online games and even in squad battles i find that to be the most effective make sure you're switching those settings when you're going into these hot moments it defaults to overload it also defaults to um a less high pressure four check i would recommend going with a two three super aggressive four check the one two two blue that way if you can get full pressure active your ai players will actually try to forecheck and try to get that puck back. Otherwise, it's a, an easy automatic clear for the AI defense. And speaking of full pressure, it sounds super obvious, but it is something you should think about. Just try to get full pressure active before you go for a goal. Um, that is, if you are struggling to score goals, just get that full pressure active. Unfortunately, like I already said, you kind of got to cheese it up because of the way the arcadey feel of hut moments and the way that you get absolutely obliterated if you get within five feet of a defender, you just gotta, I would get the puck with Natchez, use those, that, that silver unstoppable force, that silver elite edges, that gold wheels that he has, and just do laps in the offensive zone. It's unfortunate, it sucks that you gotta do this, but just do that, get full pressure active, and then there's a couple of good ways to score with full pressure active. It's gonna make scoring obviously a lot easier. I would recommend getting the puck in the corner or coming from behind the net, cycle up or kind of circle up to the high slot and take a wrist or far side. Typically far side high goes in very easily, but if you do need to work on that final objective with the, um, the low right hand shots, you could try to bank it in off the post as well. That bottom right corner goals with Natchez in the final objective or the final uh, hut moments, it will count basically the entire bottom half of the net. So it doesn't have to be super low again, like along the ice or anything. So keep that in mind. Another very effective way, maybe the most effective way to score goals in these hut moments is to get the puck with Natchez and just utilize those gold wheels. Get the puck in your own zone, beeline it down the board, just go around the defenders, go backhand, forehand, backhand, bury the biscuit. You can also start going along the boards and then do kind of like a 45 degree cut along the ice. You can cut through the middle of the D 
or cut all the way around the far side D and do the same thing, forehand, backhand, forehand, or what usually works better is backhand, forehand, backhand. Also, you could just enter the offensive zone, cut to the middle, and then shoot far side. That typically works as well. Last but not least, I want to share some tips for specific objectives. So if we're looking here at the superstar hut moments, we got get assists with Martin HS. I would recommend turning your settings to crash the net. That way, when you do have the puck with Natchez, your AI players are going towards the net. And typically here, you just want to set up for like a two-on-one, get the puck with Natchez, go through everyone, stall a little bit, try to hit your guy coming back door. And uh, it, it that's how I got both of mine. It wasn't too hard. And then finally, probably the hardest one for most people is scoring the bottom right-hand corner goals with Natchez. Like I already said, utilize those goals that I mentioned. For this one in particular, I would recommend going with a player lock. Player lock as Natchez, and it makes it a lot easier. For me, I got all three of my goals, just getting the puck in my own defensive zone and beelining straight through or around the defenders, backhand, forehand, backhand, and easy goals. Also, actually, I think one of them might have been getting the puck in the corner and then just coming towards the net and going far side low. It's not too hard with player lock. I actually got that done first try. Without player lock, I was struggling a lot with those bottom right-hand corner goals. With player lock, and with that being the only objective I cared about, it was easy to do. And boys, if you are still struggling to score goals, remember that if you have a one or two goal lead in the final minute, the AI will pull the goalie. So what you gotta do is A, you can't have more than a two goal lead, okay? So if you do have more than a two goal lead, you can just pull your own goalie and go score a goal on yourself. It takes five seconds of game time. Make sure you only have a two goal lead or less. Let them win the face off in the final minute. Try to get the puck back as soon as you can. And then based on whatever you need, try to go get a goal. Obviously the closer you are to the net, the easier it's gonna be to like pick that bottom right hand corner or just hit the open cage. But typically, even with these lower overall cards, if you're trying to get like an assist with Natchez, you get the puck with Natchez, give it to your 72 overall silver line mate. And as long as you're in the zone and you have a clear lane to the net, try to get across the blue line and then just wrist it center net and it should go in. Um, just don't get it blocked, right? Um, it's, not, it's not too hard. It is kind of hard to get two goals in the final minute just because that minute goes by pretty quickly. And especially on Superstar, when you let them win the faceoff so that they pull the goalie again after you get your first empty net goal, it's just not a lot of time to get the puck back because on Superstar, it is just challenging. And this gameplay is super funky. You can go for a crazy big hit, knock the guy 10 feet away from the puck and still not get the puck in time because everyone's just running into each other and it's a mess. So keep that in mind. It is a very easy way to get that final one goal. It can be kind of hard if you're still looking for two goals. But if you think about it, that means you only need like one assist with Natchez in the entire game, which you got three minute periods. That is very doable, guys. And then you just need one more with an empty net. It's not too hard. Utilize it if you need to. Hope you guys found these tips useful. If you're still struggling, hit me up on Twitter. Link in the description. Drop a comment down below. I'll, I, I'll, I'll help you as best I can. Let me know what specific thing you're struggling with. And maybe I can, uh, I can respond to you, send you a DM, help you out.